Michael James, our first offer in Maryborough. It's, uh, how significant are these community camps in the context of your preparation for the season? Oh, I think for the, the season, they're, they're, I mean, for the season, it doesn't really matter too much, but for the community and for um, making sure the AFL word gets spread out to the community, I think it's fantastic. I think obviously a lot of great football has come from areas like this. this uh, Stu Cramery uh, from Essendon um, comes from Maryborough, but it's just a chance to reconnect with the community and make sure that uh, we put a little bit back and, and good to see the locals out in force. And what's the uh, focus of the two day camp? I think you've got a lunch today and you're meeting some school kids, but is there a serious footy side to it as well? No, this is not about football training for us. We've trained this morning and this is all about the community. So we'll spend a couple of days up here, yeah, getting to know the kids and uh, having a kick of the football and talking about you know the good values of football rather than uh, rather than training. Is it a good bonding experience as well, just before the season starts? Yeah, I th look, I think it gives the chance the guys a chance to get out of their normal routine and just do something a little bit different. Um, you know, some of the guys are from up around this area, so it's uh, good to see their families. But for others, yeah, chance to uh, you know stay together for a night and get to know each other a bit better. I noticed you've added Hurley and Zaharakis to your leadership group over the pre-season. Have you noticed an a different approach from both of those guys this pre-season? Yeah, definitely. Both of them have been uh, a lot more uh, vocal out on the track, um, you know, and training a lot harder. And I think the, they've realised the responsibility of being a leadership group is um, is really important to them and important for the team that they do it really well. Was that a player voted thing or was that a coach thing? Uh, it was a player and coach voted thing. So it was, I think the, the eight coaches and um, the 46 players had a vote on it. And uh, yeah, and the, the five guys came up. Zaharakis in particular, what do you see his leadership qualities are like so far? Did you pick that immediately and that's something that he's going to aspire to be? Oh, obviously, David had a very good year last year winning our best and fairest, so you don't, you're not an ordinary player to do that. So his on-field performances last year are excellent. Um, and I think he's, you know, he's quite an outgoing kid. He uh, loves to talk and chat away and got great respect by his teammates. So they're all very good qualities that, um, you know, I think that to be a leader, you need to have respect and, and also have the talent to be able to play at a certain level, and he's certainly got that. Cody, you lost me made a pass marks at the moment. I think I might have asked you this last Thursday. Is that, have the Bombers got a pass mark this year in terms of a place in the ladder that you can publicly reveal or you've got in mind? No, to be honest, <laughs> we haven't. Um, I think it's all about you know setting up the environment. We want to set up an elite environment where our players can be the best they can be and and, and a, an era of success, you know, and, and make sure that we can um, build a team that's capable of performing week after week and, and then if we get to finals in finals. So, um, you know, I don't know how someone sits here and says we want to be fifth, fourth, twelfth, whatever on the ladder. For us, that's not the way we do it. Dyson had a uh, incredible year last year and I guess exceeded expectations. How do you make sure in the second and third year that doesn't sort of wane off, you know, and then you can sort of keep progressing? I think the expectation for us with Dyson Heppel is that he he trains hard and works hard and, and improves his game. I mean, there'll be games where he doesn't play well, there'll be games where he plays better than last year, and um, for us it's about the consistency of his training, and if he can keep up the consistency of his training, um, that's what we're after, because we know that if you train well, then you'll end up playing well. Injury-wise, injury uh, David Hills, I guess, had a frustrating couple of years. Is he ready... I guess fitness-wise, to have a breakout year despite his age this year. Look, you don't want to jinx someone, but so far David's put in a fantastic um, pre-season. Hasn't missed a beat. Probably, if anything, done too much. We've had to hold him back, and um, you know, with, with seven weeks to go before the season, we'll now start monitoring his loads pretty seriously because uh, at the moment there's not a player on the track who's done more or a better quality of training than David. I know every player in form is important for success, but how important is David? Oh, as you know, number one ruckman, um, working with Tom Bell Chambers and Paddy Ryder is hugely important. Um, you know, and David probably took a while last year to come to terms with the way we wanted him and, and the team to play football. Um, but so far this pre-season, I said he's been outstanding. Do you have a more solid idea of how you can use those three as best possible this season? Uh, we've got a very solid idea. We'd like to play them all, but you know, there'll be games where they'll all play, there'll be games where they won't all play, um, whether it's for injury or form or, or other things. But um, you know, I'm very keen to have all of them up and going because they're, they're three quality players. How do you approach the NAB Cup after last year? It gave you such a momentum heading into the home and away season, but then you know tape it off a little bit. Has it, this program been structured a little bit differently this season, so you take it a bit later? Uh, we're, we're we're looking as a training phase. You know, we want to prepare for round one against North Melbourne, and, and the NAB Cup will be used along those lines, so we can prepare properly for the for the real season. Um, obviously, we want to get some confidence and form, not just for us and our players, but also when our members and supporters get some confidence in what we're about. But we'll, we've identified already how many games players will play, how many minutes players will play, and as much as we can, we'll stick with that through the NAB Cup. James, the age this morning spoke about gloves and the AFL have got some concerns in relation to them. You've probably seen this issue come and go a bit over the course of your involvement in, in footy. What are your thoughts on gloves and that where they offer an advantage? I think some players like to wear them, some don't. Um, you know, personally, I found it really hard to kick um, with gloves on, but you know, part of the marking helped a bit. Other players want none, none of it. Players want some of it. I haven't got a problem if a player wants to wear a glove. I think, you know, for the 20 years I've been involved, it's come in and out of, out of focus.
Has the technology improved though in any respect? Um, um, probably, yeah, I'd say they're a little bit stickier than they used to be. Um, but yeah, I'm sure the AFL will rule, make a rule on how sticky they're allowed to be and make the ones that give you a small advantage will keep them and, and the others that don't, they probably won't be, won't be allowed. How are you going to approach the NAB Cup? Are you going to give some of your top draft picks a bit of a run just to see what they can do? Yeah, the, the plan is at the moment, obviously it's two weeks away, so anything can happen in two weeks. The plan is to play a lot of our, our young guys, particularly in that first week over in Perth. Um, it's still five weeks out from the start of the season that week, so I don't want to prime too many of our, our um, players that we expect to play the whole season up that early, but um, we'll potentially give a lot of our young players a half or a you know, full of one of those two games over in Perth. And how are you finding your second pre-season at the helm? Uh, it's, been, it's been great. It's been, um, obviously, knowing what to expect has been uh, a lot more enjoyable. I think last year was, you know, you wake up every day not knowing what to do um, and having to make it up. But this year there's been a little bit more understanding, um, which has been good. And also working with a team that, you know, working with a really good fitness team, medical team and, and coaching team has been great. And the players just seem to have developed so much more. So there's, you've already seen now 12 months of, of a plan come, to pl come into play, and that's been really enjoyable. James, there's a few reports that a couple of the top teams are really working hard on locking the ball into their forward 50. For the teams coming up, there's a lot of your work in terms of training, concentrating on getting it out of that defensive 50. Look, I think that last year um, and the year before, teams were working on locking into the forward 50, um, and that was one of the, the real key indicators of success was at time in forward half. So there's no doubt sides have been working on how to keep it in, and if you're going to play a side that keeps it in really well, you have to work out how, how to work it out of, forward, out of, out of your back 50. So um, that's the defence and attack part of the game is something that we practice every day, um, and getting it right um, is really important. Obviously, you turn it over in your back 50, there's a fair chance you get scored against.